If you are worried you have Lyme disease or just like the outdoors and want the peace of mind of knowing whether you have Lyme disease or not, there is a new Lyme screening test based on decades of research by Dr. Richard Marconi, a professor at VCU Medical Center. For more information, visit glymedx.com. That's G-L-Y-M-E-D-X.com. Or email at info at glymedx.com. Infectious diseases. Research. Medicine. Health. Welcome to Outbreak News Interviews. And now, broadcasting from the Outbreak News Skylar Studios in beautiful West Central Florida, here is your host, microbiologist and editor of OutbreakNewsToday.com, Robert Harriman. Well, hey everybody, this is Robert. You know, it's been about a month since our last Parasites 101 podcast, but the holidays are over and we're ready to jump right back into the world of human parasitology. And today's topic is the beef tapeworm, Tania Saginata. And lending her expertise is parasitology teacher, author, and friend of the show, Rosemary Drizdell. Hi, Rosemary, and I Hi. hope you've had a blessed holiday season and welcome back. Yes, thank you very much. And you? Oh, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Loved every minute of it. Too short. <laughs> Always. Yeah. Okay, let's get down to business. Uh, before we get into the specifics of Tania saginata, can you briefly talk about uh, taniasis in general for the audience? Yes, the tinea tapeworms are the ones that we're probably the most familiar with. They're the big tapeworms that sometimes you see long strips of proglottids and, and a bottle with a huge amount of tapeworm in it and somebody who's seriously telling you this is just one worm. These are the worms that get quite large. Tinea saginata can get to about 25 meters or maybe close to 75 feet long. That's just one worm. So it can fill a bottle all by itself. Mm -hmm. um, now, where is Tinea saginata found geographically? It's found worldwide and especially where beef is eaten. And how common is it? Uh, it's hard to tease out tinea saginata from the other tinnias in terms of numbers, but tineasis affects perhaps two and a half to eight and a half million people worldwide. In some places, tinea saginata will be the most common, and in other places, it'll take a back seat to other species. Yeah. Now, how does one contract this parasite, and what is the life cycle? Can you describe the life cycle? Sure, it's an interesting life cycle. You get the tapeworm by eating undercooked beef. The beef muscle cells contain the larvae of the tapeworm, and so when you eat those and they're still alive, they, they get digested out of the beef that you've eaten, and they attach themselves to the lining of the small intestine, and they start to grow, and they simply grow a segment, grow segments one at a time, so they get longer and longer. These segments are maybe a little less than half an inch long, usually, with the most immature one being right next to the head of the parasite, and then as you move down, they become more and more mature until they are mature enough to release eggs into the stool, which are then passed into the outside world. And if those are passed on the ground, and a cow comes along and eats the eggs that are on the ground, then the cow becomes infected with the larval stage of the tapeworm. And one might think that human feces wouldn't be all that attractive to a cow, but apparently they think that human feces are actually quite a treat. And in parts of the world where people you know, go to the bathroom outdoors and cows roam freely, cows are known to even follow people into the woods in the hope of getting a bit of a snack. That's 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 something that's supposed to be, wait for the end of the show. <laughs> um, now, what are the signs and symptoms of uh, tinea saginata? Often you don't know that you have this tapeworm. There may be no symptoms at all, which is contrary to what most of us think. Probably the if there are symptoms, they don't amount to much more than a bit of abdominal discomfort. Most people don't even know they have a worm until one crawls out into their underwear. Right. So there's not a lot of serious pathology with this. No. Uh, they have quite a reputation, but actually they don't cause much illness. Um, now, can you talk about the morphology of the adult tapeworm 
and the diagnostic yeah. egg stage. Sure. The adult tapeworm has a very tiny head that has four very powerful little suckers on it. And this is how it remains attached to the lining of the intestine. So usually we don't see that part of the worm, but the segments and strips of segments will break off and be passed in the stool. They are often about the size of a large cucumber seed. And they can be quite motile, so they can move around like little inchworms. Each one is an individual. So that's the tapeworm, the adult that we usually see. The eggs are microscopic. They're quite tiny, about 35 microns in size. They're spherical. Sometimes if you have good lighting under the microscope, you can see a little creature inside with hooklets on its head. And interestingly, they are covered with tiny pores, which are actually, they are literally pores that communicate with the atmosphere on the outside. Now, going back to the adult tapeworm, there, these segments that you describe in the head, there's actually names for these things too, right? Yes, it's the scolex is the head, mm -hmm. and the segments are proglottids. Right. And um, concerning the egg stage, uh, I, I know when I went to lab school, I was warned about if you ever see this, because though Tania saginata is not so pathogenic, its sister parasite is, so you have to be very, very careful when you're dealing with the egg stage, because you don't know which it is. Correct. You don't know which species you have, unless you can get a proglottid that is mature, and, and those we can identify. Also, the scolex we can identify, but the eggs themselves you can't. Tinea saginata eggs are harmless to humans, but as you say, the tinea solium, the pork tapeworm, those can cause serious illness. Right, and so for listeners, that will be the next parasite we talk about. Right. Um, now, how about treatment and prevention? Treatment is usually prasaquantil, which is one of the standard uh, drugs that we use against the helminths, the intestinal worms. Prevention depends on, of course, two things, cooking your beef well, and preventing cattle from having access to human feces and feeding on them. Now, are there any interesting tales that go along with this tapeworm? Well, because it's such a large worm and fairly obvious, people have been familiar with Tinea saginata for centuries. And interestingly, many of the older European and Eastern cultures believed that these worms were quite intelligent and that they could actually hear. They were rumored to not like church music very much. So people who thought they had a tapeworm would avoid going to church because that could stir their worm up. But also the worms were rumored to like other types of music. So if it was causing you any symptoms, you could simply go and listen to some quiet music for a while and settle the worm down. And their hearing even extended to the understanding of language people believed. So if they had a plan to get rid of their tapeworm, they wouldn't talk about that aloud, lest the worm should hear them. Yeah. And one, one last thing, Rosemary, and correct me if I'm wrong, the, the Tania saginata eggs, these are what were used in these weight loss fads, am I correct? Well, presumably, although one can't assume that people always knew what they were dealing with. Exactly. Yeah, it was not a very good plan for losing weight. <laughs> right. No. All right. Well, and like I said, we will be talk next time we uh, do a interview on um, parasites. It will be about Tinea solium. So uh, stay tuned for that. And thank right. you once again, Rosemary Drizdell, for your time and expertise. Oh, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good night.